You're listening to Artie Tune, a podcast with artists created and produced by Detlef Schlick, a visual artist and ritual designer, living and loving in West Cork, and best known for his essay about the cause and effect of shamanism, art and digital culture. Working in the field of performance, photography, painting, sound, installations, and film he will dive and discover with us and a weekly creative guest into the unknown and exciting deep ocean of the creative mind. This is Detlef Schlich and today we dive together with Joe Piquel into the deep and exciting unexpected ocean of the creative mind. <laughs> Hi, Joe. Hi, Ted. Joe Piquel. Piquel. It sounds yes. very, um, what is it? Exotic. It is it's very exotic. Yes, I come from, my, my name is Joe Piquel. We have come to this country to, to try to convince you of the need for love and understanding. So Piquel is French, isn't it? No. No? <laughs> what, what <laughs> I thought it, it was. What, what, what is it? Actually, my dad told me it's English and Scottish, so not half as exotic as I was hoping. So, you, you, what is your father? Is half English or Scottish? Well, I think it's more than that, but that's probably the main components. All right, all right. And and, and your mother is, is American or is no, it? no? How dare you? She's Irish. Is she? She's a hundred percent Irish. I don't know. So, yeah. where, where where is she from? She's from Sagart in County Dublin. All right. It's about ten miles from Dublin. Okay, okay. Beautiful place, Sagard. I, I was, I, I was, do you still have friends over there? Yeah. Yeah. So well, in that area. There's the next town over is Rathcool. I've got a friend that I've uh, I still talked to from Rathcool. Yeah. And I'm sure if I saw a lot of those people, I'd still be friends with them. Cause okay. Great place. It's a great place. Is it? I've never been there. So yeah. it sounds, sounds cool. It's cool. Very nice. Cool. Cool. Joe, great to have you here. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, it's really nice. I mean, we had in the last two parts very interesting talk about the uh, first part about America and this time around Detroit and the second part about the storytelling and, and actually his, his, his stand-up comedian and the combination of drawing and writing his book. He finished almost his book. Um, what's the name of the book again? The Mythical Misfits. Yeah, which is uh, still in, in the, the, the lecture lecture process. No, editing. The, the editing process. The editing process. What do you think when when, when you could be... Uh, I hope very soon, but I'm waiting for my sister to edit it first, you know. Yeah. So, so that means what what could we do on this place here? So if, if a publisher would be interested, so, so, so would you like to, to find one? Hell, hell yeah. Yeah. Of course I would. Yeah. So, yes, I'd definitely love to find one. People listen. That's my dream, is to find one. Okay. So, yeah, listen to it. So, if anyone knows a publisher, mm -hmm. uh, or he can... Please she, tell me. She can, can, can get into contact. I uh, put all the details uh, yeah. from, from Joe and, and my subscription. And as well, you can see characters, uh, visual characters and characters in my um, YouTube visual attitude thingy which I put up on a later stage. Great. Cool. So that's, that's, that's about, about his, his, his book. That's which the size of that. That's about the size of that folks. Yeah. Which, which was just finished. Well, look, from what I've heard from what people who've been reading it have told me they've liked it. And when I read it back, I look at it not as something I've written and I like it. So yeah, I think I've done something that's, I hope it's going to go somewhere. Yeah. Fingers I, crossed. I like it. Yeah. Personally, I like I'm, it. I'm looking forward to reading it, actually. Yeah, I'll give it to you. Yeah, cool. So, so I was thinking about that. I'm always thinking, okay, so, so I don't know how long I can keep up this st energy and the standard during three parts of a talk uh, with, with exciting and interesting things. But I try because I really like it as well. Well, you better not fail, buddy, because you'll have a lot of disappointed listeners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
and uh, and then I had a chat with Joe, and Joe, Joe, Joe he admitted at, as well that that he had his his own. It was wasn't a podcast; it was a radio station in Hawaii. Well, no, I, I didn't have my own radio station. Oh, shit, I wish I did. No, yeah. I, I I had a show on the university radio station. It was University Radio Hilo. And I had a show from 12 to 4 every Friday night called Rock and Roll Hell. And I played all sorts of bizarre and strange things, and nobody listened to it. But it was fun to do at the time. And I came up with a lot of uh, strange comedy stuff that I was maybe thinking of. You could play a couple of them on here. I mean, they're not politically correct, again. But then again, at the time, I wasn't doing stuff for kids, so keep that in mind. It, well, I mean, know, this is... This, this was quite a while ago, too. So. I'm I mean, this channel is, is is not not just just it's actually not for kids it is for artists and and i yeah. mean okay kids are but artists i mean as, what my book well. is for kids so i mean what i'm trying to do is entertainment for children but what i'm saying is that i've also done a lot of entertainment that's not for children yeah. which is probably pretty obvious from these interviews yeah you know what the pr the problem is with with um with this adult and kids thing is is on youtube for instance if i tick the box um this youtube show is is not explicit so so it so that means children friendly mm -hmm. people are not entitled to comment anymore oh know? really if it's for kids yeah 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 mm -hmm. so so what i did as well you know because i want actually to create a discourse is i say it's not for kids even if i mean so how often i do say <laughs> yeah not very often i probably said it more than you did during this did you i don't know yeah i think so yeah so 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 you did you did their rock and roll thingy show how long did you do it oh almost a year a year yeah and every every friday yep every friday for hours. was it just music and no it was not you, you said you it was stand up, no, stand up comedian as well well no what i did was like kind of like parodies and satires and and uh i did different characters and had like little sketches that I put in between songs. Yeah. I didn't give any explanation of what it was. There was one thing that was like a, I took my own comedy routines and I, I recorded them and then I put the helium, you know, the helium effect on Ableton, the, the helium effect where you can make it all in go Ableton. squeaky. Oh, yeah. I can imagine that. I developed yeah. this character called yeah. Bebo, the midget comedian. Yeah. So and I had him deliver all my stuff that I couldn't do properly on stage. And again, nobody heard it. So, it was so funny, funny to me. Okay, but but um, it might be maybe interesting for people who would like to to work. So, so you did it in Ableton. Yeah. So so you used to work with Ableton in in your show as well. So yeah. You added it before, and and then you used the stuff in in this two hours. Yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah, it was great fun. Didn't get paid for it though. So you used to live in Hawaii. It was great. You yeah, used, I used to live in Hawaii. Yeah. 
for a year. Mm -hmm. Did you do a uh, stand-up comedian there as well? Well, I was living in a place called Hilo, so there's no real venue to do that. Um, no, what I was doing there was just a radio show, and I was doing like odd jobs. I had a job where I was delivering rental cars from one side of the island to Kona. Um, for a year. For a year, yeah. It was it was probably quite hot, and you had really. Oh, it was great though. That the mm -hmm. environment in Hawaii is they call it paradise for a reason because it's the perfect environment. You know, it's not sweaty like Florida, or probably a lot of other places too. But I mean, Florida, I'm, I know. Yeah. Florida, uh, Hawaii is great. But the only problem I had with Hawaii was after about four months of being there, yeah. I started developing allergies to everything. Yeah. And the only thing I could find that would control these allergies was the shit that they include to make a. Uh, crystal meth with so i was taking this stuff and it was just like it was uh, wired to uh, the moon i couldn't sleep with this shit but it was the only thing that would stop me from being allergic to oh all God. the plants so you know? it was a description so I, basically i was allergic to paradise so oh i developed a whole comedy idea about this thinking you know when i get to the pearly gates when i die and i go to heaven yeah you know i'm yeah. sure i'm gonna start sneezing <laughs> you know because that's my look so i'll just say fuck it send me to hell i know how this game goes I know how this ends. Just send me down there. Spare me, for Christ's sake. Yeah, I mean, but that's the thing, isn't it? With, with li living in paradise, I mean, I live here as well, on a beautiful place, and I'm allergic against against all this pollen and, and, and uh, yeah. shit like that. I mean, you you hated in Hawaii then. I, I mean, I loved it for the first few months, but then after that, man, it was a nightmare. What was it? How allergies. How It was, they were the worst I had since the time I was a kid. When I was a kid, I had such bad allergies that I'd wake up in the morning, my eyes would be caked shut with this mm. fudge, this white fudge. It was horrible, you know. Did you did you <laughs> make a comedy? Awful. Did you make a stand up comedy out of from it as yeah, well? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I didn't do actually you, ever perform it. But do, I wrote do, do, you have a, do you have do we have a minute for, from from that still in your mind? I'm telling you right now, <laughs> this is part of it. It's like Hawaii. Your your paradise is my hell. All right. Okay. No, that's It's sort of like that, you know. But I could tell you some more about Hawaii when I was there. Yeah. That I found interesting was. Yeah. The first thing was, you know, monster trucks with those huge tires. Yeah, yeah. You usually yeah, have them yeah, at these stadiums yeah. where they run over like 22 cars or something, you know. Yeah. But people drove them around there like they were just normal cars. And you'd be looking at these, and then the guy would get out of the car and he'd be like this huge, like, mullet-haired dude with. <laughs> <laughs> Hulk Hogan body and you'd be like, Jesus <laughs> Christ these people are stuck in 1987 you know and then you'd see these huge women that were like did you ever see the never ending story uh, the I think, rock yeah, yeah, people yeah, the yeah. rock people these huge women yeah, 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 just yeah, yeah. massive like yeah. walls of flesh coming at you and you'd be like Jesus where do they come from this is just a small island and these people are gargantuan but Not to be racist. I don't mean it like that at all. It's just I used to be astounded. At the, and there'd all be all different ethnicities of Asian people yeah. everywhere. Like, you know, there's Vietnamese, Chinese, Japanese, Thai, everything. Every combination, too, of that. And, and it was fascinating to me. But those people, those huge people, I just wonder where they came from. Because they'd be uh, intimidated. You okay, walk into I, a 7-Eleven or something, they'd block the whole door. One woman, you'd be like... Jesus, and she's not even fat. <laughs> she's just huge. Like what you hear so far? Make sure you never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button now. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your support. Now back to the show. Yeah, no, that's good. What what I like actually, what I really like is um, that aesthetics is actually just a, a matter of culture. You know, you know, you know. So I mean, I mean, we we are here not 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 used to it, and especially in in times since Twiggy. Uh, Twiggy. The skin, skinny, the, the skinny, skinny, skinny twiggy, and and, and singer, yeah. yeah, all all this 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 um, anorexic stuff probably started in the uh, I don't know. I mean, 
if I say now in in, in the sixties, I'm, I'm probably I'm, I'm probably wrong, you know. But but I mean, oh, I say you're probably right. It probably was the sixties. Yeah. So, yeah. but it's 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 more this 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 Western European thing. Well, don't get me wrong. I've got nothing against big people. Yeah. I was just commenting on. But you're coming from America. The I'm, shock I'm, of seeing someone that big, you know. Yeah, because I'm not a very big guy. No, no, no. Joe's 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 quite. Wow. quite I mean, that's that, right. That's that's the thing. If 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 you're not if you're not big, you put things absolutely into a different perspective. I mean, if if you put things always into the perspective where you're coming from, isn't it? I mean, if you yeah. if you're big like me, I am one meter eighty three or whatever, you know. So so, um, I have a different aesthetic and perspective probably as well. Some yeah yeah so. So, so Joey is not a. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a huge barbarian. Sorry, folks. Sorry to disappoint you, ladies. Maybe next uh, incarnation, <laughs> I'll be Conan, Jonan, Jonan, Jonan the barbarian. <laughs> but not this one. Yeah, cool. So you 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 did you you did it a year, and uh, how was? I mean, if you did this show in Hawaii, and 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 you 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 probably. Uh, were quite provocative. So, how was the reaction? There was no reaction. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nobody listened Nothing. to it. Nothing. No, we didn't have any promotion or anything. So, so you didn't promote it. No. You just made it. It. it yeah. You see, that's. I should have. I wish I had now. Now that we're talking about it, but at the time I was so wrapped up in like writing the comedy stuff and recording it every week that it. That would have taken too much time away from what I was. Sure, really I mean, interested I mean, how in, many, how many years, how many years writing. was it ago? Um, shit, uh, thirteen more, maybe, no, sixteen. So we speak sixteen of, years ago. We speak of, on the time. Sixteen years. We speak of, nearly twenty years ago. Yeah. So we speak of time before social media, you yeah. know. Well, and, time's long gone past. Yeah. There's still social media, but it wasn't like how it is now. Not not like now. It was around 2000, and, and you could do the, the, the guerrilla tactic, which means with flyers and and, and with stamps, yeah. to, to on hands and and, and and on 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 Hawaiian uh, coconut leaves. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. well, you know, that was something I was thinking about today. But you know, I don't think many people realize this, but every year, 12 people die by falling coconuts in Hawaii. If they're sitting un un underneath the the, the, yeah. the palm or what, or they're walking by it at the wrong time, you know. But but you know you know that they that that that, that they 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 count they they sell land in Panama on Panama Islands not by square meter or square foot. Uh, they they sell it by by pounds by coconut pounds. Yeah, yeah, they do. Well, they are a very beautiful uh, piece of greenery. I love the place. I think it's great. I would recommend anyone to go there. I, it's a beautiful place. Yeah, I mean, amazing. And the ocean is just stunning to swim in in Hawaii. It's like bath water, you know. So, so you used to live on a beach side or whatever. So you, you I used to live about yeah. ten minutes from the beach. Yeah. So, it sounds that you had a good time. So, and you we found this little like inlet that was like blocked off because I had a total paranoia about sharks. Yeah. Because you know I heard about like the surfers seeing sharks All and right. I heard other people talking about sharks right. there are tiger sharks out there and they do yeah. like come up yeah. to people and occasionally they they mess with them you know yeah. but i found this little inlet that no shark could get into because it was surrounded by rocks <sighs> but let me tell you this man yeah. this was the most amazing thing i think i've ever seen yeah. as far as nature goes yeah. i was just looking at the water one day yeah. in hilo and standing on the rocks in the midst of this inlet and these humongous sea turtles, probably mm. about half the size of this room. Mm. I mean, they were just huge, two yeah. of them. Yeah. Must have been a, a male and a female. Okay. They just drifted off from the rocks and just floated along off into the distance. And it was amazing. Sea distance. turtles. Yeah, huge ones. They were huge. They were probably huge about sea turtles. 25 or 30 feet wide. Wow. Each one. They were huge. And it was like looking at an alien organism just floating off from the... You know, rocks, you you know that the turtles as well are some some of of the mythical figures, uh, the the ancient mythical figures, and and uh, some compare turtles with the or or, or the tragedy of the turtles turtles with tragedy of the humans, oh, yeah? because because oh. um, the turtles they have the same problems like the humans they 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 they, 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 they can't see their their own beauty on the back. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, I mean, turtles can't. They, they probably never saw their own their own shield, you know, and and, and the uh, the texture mm -hmm. on this shield, you know, which is amazing. Yeah. I mean, they have yeah. amazing shields, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, that's a, that's the same problems we human have, because so. because um, because uh, we we start to blame each other, or uh, shame and blame, instead mm -hmm. of love each other, you know. Yeah. So uh, that's yeah. I agree. yeah. So I would Great. say. On this note, thank you very much, Joe. Well, thank you for having me, Ted Levin. I'd like to just say one last thing, okay? Yeah. To Mar this is to Martina. I love you, baby. You're the greatest. That's it. Thanks. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for having me, man. And thanks, Martina. Yeah. And thank you, Martina. Hey, I wish you very, very much good luck with your book. What's the title again, please? The Mythical Misfits. Yeah. So, and Thanks. if there is any publisher, please uh, get in contact with us. Yeah. And guys, I hope to see you soon next week as well in this podcast. Bye bye. This is a listener-supported show. I feel honored if you subscribe this show. You can follow me non-financial with the following click on one of my Instagram accounts or subscribe the visual version of this podcast on YouTube via the link. If you like what you hear, be sure to tune in next Wednesday for Attitude Talk with Instagram. If you want to leave a donation for a coffee or a bus ticket, just follow the donation link via the Attitude Podcast. Eventually, I would like to thank, through this medium, all my members and listeners of the I Love West Cork Artists Network from all over the world. Just to remember myself that without you, this year couldn't and wouldn't happen. You have listened to Artie Jude, West Cork's first art, fashion and design podcast. Artie Jude, never so close again. Ah! That was too close.